<laughs> all right, cool. I think we're all here. Cool. Uh, well, before we dive into yeah. a bunch, I'd want to talk about, you know, we just got back from, from Cosmoverse and Mainnet, and some of which, you know, shaped a lot of what happened this month, and, and some of which, uh, um, you know, was a lot of what we set out, you know, set out to, to show and share. Uh, if you, Vanessa, you want to join me and talk about uh, the cool partner things that happened, that'd be awesome. Yeah, of course. So just an overview of Cosmoverse. Or the, the, the yeah, the five partners and such, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we had a wonderful time out in Medellin, Colombia. Uh, we were, you know, three of our mainnet partners flew out to give workshops, including um, LH2 Staking, Martin of RBF Labs. He did an intro to Agoric and then also gave a talk on the observatory and LH2 Staking as a whole. And um, we also had our partners from BytePitch uh, give a talk on the lending protocol and give a workshop so developers could launch a lending protocol um, on the machine and eventually in our test net and hopefully mainnet. Um, and then Crya, who's launching Crya app on mainnet, they also gave a talk um, focused on launching your own NFT project. The, so. the thing that's cool about these, so so just to you know, obviously our mainnet one is focused on IST launch, but it really is also sort of the first launch of the JavaScript platform. These are folks that are building for launching in, you know, once the third party apps can be added with you know a permission vote to launch these third party apps they're set up to to launch for that um the first one in particular the 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 liquid staking is uh a a, a liquid staking uh protocol you know that that there was a lot of discussion about liquid staking it was a big part of where where cosmos is going in the next year the particular thing that's interesting about the 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 LH2 liquid staking is it's really focused on on providing liquid staking, but also enhancing decentralization. And so they built a tool where you can look at a whole bunch of chains. Obviously, it started with Agoric, um, and be able to look at how well they're decentralized, not just across geo and jurisdictions and you know where in the world, but also across data centers. And so we've already seen, you know, enhancement in the decentralization of the Agoric network by looking at you know where were where our validators clustered and, and them being able to see and go, oh, I guess I should move. So we've already seen a little bit of movement to, to get better decentralization. Um, so I'm really excited about what that provides long-term for sort of safety and decentralization and security. Yeah, and Martin, the founder, uh, along with his team are regularly just you know, taking feedback, still putting in updates. I was speaking with the validator this morning and they actually said that, you know, they, they wanted to get their data uh, better represented there. So they're already talking, they're up, chatting on Discord if you guys want to also engage with them. Excellent. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and overall, our partners just, you know, to say, like, it was really great to see them engage more with the Cosmos community. A lot of conversations happen with other uh, networks that were there for either providing their service or trying to, like, find better ways to engage with everything that's getting built out in Cosmos. So it was, it was really successful for everyone overall. That's very cool. The other thing that we did uh, that... that, that um... Uh, partnering was the uh, custody providers. With regards to what's launched oh, or announced? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, uh, uh, during uh, mainnet, um, or you know, and, and through and through through the the um, Cosmoverse in particular, uh, uh, Aegis and Finoa both announced recently uh, support for custody of build. Um, so, so <laughs> Vanessa and I spent a lot of time talking to people about this. Um, <laughs> I'm really excited about that. It's one of those things where, where, you know, we have upcoming token unlocks. We've got the launch happening of, of, of the platform and that enables institutions to get into the ecosystem more broadly and, and more deeply and grow with, with the, the platform and environment. Um, you know, we know that that's critical for a healthy economy. And so having that having that door unlocked to invite those folk in is, is, is going to be great. You know, it's not, it's not um, uh, critical for individuals typically and Cosmos is very um, self custody and, you know, with, with the, the, the astonishing amount of ledgers and in individual custody, which I think is a very healthy thing for decentralized, you know, user focused uh, tokens, but being able to have, um, institutional custody really provides a good basis for for an economy. So I was really excited to see that that uh, uh, start to roll out. So. 
Anyway, any other, uh, you know, I know mostly we're focused on the Agoric system here. Any particular things you want to say about the IST uh, adoption stuff or? or uh, 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 I mean, brief. I know we have another call for that. But uh, no, honestly, it was just every every Cosmos conference or where we all gather all the zones together, uh, there's always question on IST, the progress. And so we had a lot of great discussions and a lot of inbound interest around the use of IST in different zones. So we're hoping to, we're definitely continuing those conversations. We hope to announce uh, those you know, leading up to or right around the IST launch. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of excitement about IST, which which we'll share and we'll share at the the IST call. Um, awesome. Thank you. The the the, the the things that uh, the the two big notable things that happened at um, I guess in this case Cosmoverse um, that that are uh, significant to Agoric is USDC launched or rather not launched but USDC. Um, uh, announced the circle announced that they would be providing native USDC in the Cosmos uh, uh, ecosystem, you know, connected with IBC. Um, that complements the current bridged USDC that our ISD uh, um, w- will be using. You know, my belief is it does not displace it. Right, people are still going to be using bridged ISD or USDC, but having USDC in the in the Cosmos ecosystem directly directly natively supported by uh, by Circle, I think is going to be great for IST, and we'll talk more about that too at the at the um, at the Inter Protocol Community Call. Um, and then the last thing is the Atom 2.0 uh, white paper, which was, of course, one of the biggest, most important things for the Cosmos ecosystem uh, coming out. You know, second, of course, only to the discussion about IST um, uh, 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 at Cosmoverse. Um, Roland, are you uh, uh, do you have you had a couple of thoughts about how that interacts with uh, Agora? Yeah, sure. And and so I, I'd start by encouraging everybody listening here, if you haven't read the white paper yourself, it, it is worth worth taking a look at. And, you know, it's 27 pages or something like that. Take a look at it, understand how the group of the Cosmos Hub is looking at moving forward. You know, from, from Agoric's perspective and Interprotocol's perspective, um, the one piece of Atom 2.0 that, that's really interesting is the, the allocator, which is uh, really, you know, my understanding of that is sort of their goal is to get Atom cemented as a key asset in the interchain ecosystem. And they'll sort of proactively partner with external chains or external tokens to uh, drive joint liquidity, you know, across DEXs, right? So, um, you know, to us, that likely means we, we end up with some sort of partnership with the hub around Atom IST liquidity. And that's certainly something that we're going to to pursue as we understand the, the details getting ironed out there. And, you know, I know there's a, there's a lot of conversation in the community around how that's actually going to work and how the treasury treasury will get built and, and managed. Uh, but presuming that, that that gets ironed out, we're really excited to, to see how that partnership can, can move forward. Um, so, and, you know, I, I think I'll, I'll just kind of roll into product updates here. Go for um, it. Yeah, we, you know, we've got a big month coming. Um, this is, we are sort of closing on the imminent release of the Mainnet 1 MVP. Um, and we talk about that a lot in the context of Interprotocol launching. But Interprotocol sits on top of the rest of the JavaScript stack that, you know, the team here has been building for years or decades, depending on how you think about it. And uh, so it really is a, a big moment coming up for Agoric. Um, you know, we have the, the kernel launching, the uh, our smart contract framework, our electronic rights transfer protocol and and all the stuff that actually make interprotocol possible on top of agoric are, are launching with it so um really really excited for that for that to come and you know obviously we'll talk about inter in the interprotocol um community call you know the, the contracts that really that are launching on top of the stack they include the parity stability module contract uh, a governance contract which will help uh which is sort of how the the actual parity stability module gets managed by the economic committee, which has already been elected. Um, and then a smart wallet contract as well that allows users to, to work with their Agoric objects in a, in a native way, but still let Kepler do the signing. Um, so we've got a few different contracts that are all going to interact as part of this this initial launch. And I may be missing some smaller helper ones as well. Well, can I add uh, on the smart wallet contract? I know a lot of people in, in you know that have looked at the, the the tech of that are excited that it you know plays well with Auth Z, um, so it'll be able to integrate with lots of other of the Cosmos tools people are building. 
Yes, exactly. And you, you guys can all expect um, a, a demo of the user flow coming shortly. Actually, we, we probably could get that out early early next week, if, if not before. Um, that will show you what the user experience of the PSM will look like. Uh, realistically, you know, you'll have the Kepler wallet and it'll connect to your smart wallet. It'll, it's a quite an easy flow. Um, and then, I, you know, I, I, I want to also sort of emphasize what Interprotocol has done for, for the uh, Agoric as a broader smart contract platform, you know, really has driven us to complete a, a whole bunch of the stuff at the lower levels of the stack that are required to get this MVP out. And it, it drove, you know, a, a lot of effort that's going to be really necessary from the mainnet two partners that Dean and, and Vanessa spoke about. Um, and it also drove us to do a lot of, uh, performance testing and building related tooling. Um, and, you know, a, a few folks at Agoric in particular have really, really driven that forward. And I know Dean Dean is pretty excited about it too. Um, so, yeah, you know, the, the, yeah. so I actually showed this at Cosmoverse in my presentation, you know, little snippets of what, what, what you know, uh, the developers refer to as, you know, sort of DevOps eye candy, right? The, the, the thing that's exciting, you know, partly, yes, it lets us make our system go faster and it'll let our system go faster, but, but, but it puts us under an engineer engineering regime where it, where, where we can use, you know, the real tools that people in industry have, have built over time for, 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 for scaling massive systems and analyzing their performance. And, 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 and so being able to really characterize and tell what's going on when something is unusual, um, being able to look at a network of machines and notice that one is acting differently from a performance point of view than the others, you know, those kinds of things are just, you know, the, the, the sort of the hardcore engineering that is that 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 lets this stuff scale in the future and and gives us the tools to be able to increase perf as we go forward. You know, we're happy with the perf being good enough for for the the PSM launch, but you know, we know that's one of those things where it's never good enough for what people want to do next. Um, and so the most important thing was you know getting it under that discipline. And so so I'm just really excited about that. Um, there are. You know, as you as you wander around our, you know, the GitHub and our open source stacks, you'll see you'll see, you know, perf tickets that have graphs of saying, oh, what's why is this unusual? And, and an analysis of what happened by someone digging into these tools. And it just it just is it's it's a thing that I've been wanting to see for literally a couple of years that gets us the, the, the you know, that gets us all that stuff under control and under under engineering discipline. And it, I just love it. <laughs> Yeah, it, and it really just, you know, it emphasizes it, it, it's one part amongst many uh, of how Interprotocol has really driven us forward to, to, to get ready for the larger platform release. So, you know, all that is to say, we've we got a big month coming up, uh, a lot of releases, and I'm going to uh, turn it over to Jesse, who's got some details on uh, security and community. Yep, yep. So if Roland thinks he has had a big month planned ahead, Security's been pretty busy uh, making sure that we're paying attention to all of the tiny details um, that help us, you know, manage risk and keep badness out of our system. Um, a lot of our independent security assessment reports and purple team reports are going to start popping up at agoric.com slash security um, and enter the enter.trade website as well in advance of our mainnet one launch. Um, this is really important because we did do quite a quite a bit of work over the past year uh, to introduce, you know, independent folks into our code base and into how things work. And they found some really interesting stuff, or you'll learn that they had a really hard time attacking our stuff and they explain why. Uh, that's been a really thrilling, thrilling process that's been going on for what, 15 months now? Um, and I think once we get those out in the world, we'll also be working on a blog post that gives a little bit of a behind the scenes detail for what we were thinking about and what our plans are for re-reviewing different things and, and whatnot. On the other side of that, um, we're continuing to book and prioritize some of our reviews um, for inter-protocol and for, for uh, various layers of the Agoric stack. We're getting to the point now where some things are eligible for a re-review. Uh, for example, last year around this time, we had just looked at XS and it'll be time for us to look at it again really, really soon with the Modable team. That was a really fun one, by the way. I look back on that one fondly. Um, so we'll have quite a few more reading materials to come. 
And then on the security side of things, we're always thinking about network and network health. So it's also time to get ready to support some of these upcoming software upgrades and the network coordination exercises that come with them for EmoryNet and OllieNet and MainNet and all the other nets that we get to play with. Um, in September, our validator office hours covered the conversion that we're going to have from Ag0 to AgD. So our just running a Cosmos chain to, oh my God, it's a Cosmos chain and JavaScript stack. And there's some significant changes that come with that for our validators, um, but that we you know, had a good discussion with them and they've got a heads up on what things they might need to add to their nodes or what they might have to look out for, because we are asking for a few novel things uh, when, our, when our JS stack starts running on the chain in production for the first time. And especially with all of this launch um, excitement coming up, we'll definitely be consulting with our validators on when we should hold an office hour again, um, just in case we need to have a troubleshooting session or we need to do some fire drills. So keep an eye out on the office hours channels and Discord um, if you happen to be a validator and want to come and have um, some, some fun with us in that corner. And then on the community side, because we're gonna have so much exciting change coming up, we're gonna have a ton of governance activity, I think over the next few weeks. So we'll have network upgrades for mainnet one, all kinds of things, I'm sure. So if you haven't yet, make sure that you're staking your tokens so you can actually vote and you can participate. Of course, um, the Auric team is going to keep an eye out for proposals and share information about them as they, they hit the chain. Um, but be ready because this is how the community launches this system and helps it move forward. The other big thing on the calendar is actually November 1st. We have a huge BLD unlock um, happening and circulate, circulating supply is going to go from more than 43 million tokens to somewhere over 260 million BLD roaming around. Uh, we've had really huge growth in the ecosystem. Um, our token has been available in more places than ever over the past couple months. So um, it seems like now is a really good time, or a couple weeks from now is a really good time to kick off a community-led discussion about all things staking and DeFi-friendly staking initiatives. There's been a lot of that move, movement in Cosmos in general, uh, but with so many people coming in from so many different places, and not everyone necessarily... Um, it, not everyone necessarily being fluent in Cosmos, or maybe maybe BLD is their first Cosmos <laughs> token. We have a lot of work to do on the <laughs> front, and we're looking forward to passing the mic over to our validators in our community uh, so they can talk about how staking supports healthy decentralization. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. <clears throat> I think uh, Santi inserted that he had a question here from, from the community about that. Oh, yeah, I do. So I, I think um, yeah, this is regarding the inflation rate, correct? Yeah. Let me see if I can find this. So there was a question about thoughts on the inflation rate moving forward. Yes, especially oh, yeah. the, uh, the coming right, November right, right. build on luck. Yes. <laughs> right. So um, so uh, ironically, I think that there, 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 I do believe that there's, you know, so so part of that discussion will include discussion of the inflation rate. Uh, it's it was always targeted that we had an initial inflation rate. And then at the point where we moved to the JavaScript platform deployed, where now the system both has more assets on it, has, has actual, you know, people relying on its function and has, you know, potentially more work and responsiveness by the validators, you know, that, 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 that here's where, you know, the staking network security becomes critical. Um, and so it's certainly time to discuss whether that, you know, uh, change to that staking rate. Now, um, if you look at the staking rate right now, nominally, it's around 39 percent. You know, I, healthy um, or a healthy target for once we're all in production is around 60 percent of, you know, 60 percent plus of the, 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 the token state. But. Where we're actually at is closer than the numbers would appear because some large chunks of tokens, some large tranches of tokens are like 
in the decentralization fund preparing to be staked to enable oracles for future IST infrastructure or in the community fund to, you know, the community uh, tranche to be added to the community fund or support community activities. And so those are, you know, those are deliberately not staked so that they're not part of the voting set that you all are controlling the chain with. Um, and so, um, and so when we, when we pull those out, um, we're actually around 50% of the, of the sort of extrinsic tokens out there outside of those um, internal funds, it, those tokens stick. So we're doing, we're really close on that target of crossing the, 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 the you know, the, the 60% number. So, um, so I'm expecting uh, some increase in the, in the, um, in the new issuance to support the fact that now there's going to be some more work and we, and, and we want the, the, the staking rate to secure the chain to go up. Um, and so we'll, that discussion to figure out exactly what that number is um, and when it should happen, you know, is, is, is to me part of the, the sequence of things that, that, that the team has been orchestrating uh, or, you know, that, and that the community has been orchestrating around launching. And so the votes for us, as, as Jesse was talking about the votes for, Okay, you know, we've seen what you did. We see the numbers. We see that our machines can handle it. Yes, we'll launch that software um, for JavaScript. We've done the exercise. We know how to do it. Um, and, you know, part and parcel of all of that, that sequence of stuff will be the, 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 uh, the changes in staking. <clears throat> so, so my focus is, you know, as, as, as a Gork Opco, right, my focus is on releasing, you know, this is a long-term uh, play for an enormous platform, and we're taking, you know, the, the the biggest step yet in the next couple of weeks here. So um, so uh, uh, staking improvements and enhancements are, are are to me a part of that. And the stuff that the community is organizing that, that, that Jesse mentioned is 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 a place where I think that'll happen. So and then all so, the all the fun stuff that's happening in the ecosystem around yes, build and support, right? Right. right. I yeah, yeah, we, yeah. I mentioned during, earlier the custody yeah, stuff, uh, yeah. which, which you know, which Vanessa pulled together, Aegis and 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 uh, uh, and Finoa. Um, and so, uh, but but I know there are others. You've got others to tell us about. Yeah, well, no, there, there's you know, we we were missed the conference and these things were kind of popping up. Um, so I know <laughs> DeFi Yield, you know, shout out they, um, uh, you know, they now support Build, which is cool. And you know, we had a wallet, uh, Leap Wallet, announced support for Build as well. Um, which is really cool, you know, just seeing this kind of like permissionless movement of people supporting, you know, building, growing the ecosystem of, of you know, of, you know, yeah, uh, you know, you know, applications that are that are all kind of floating around Agoric <laughs> is great. Um, and then, you know, I think a note too that we, we we haven't talked too much about it, and it's probably for another call, but you know, MetaMask you know, using hard in JavaScript <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, is something I'd love to maybe talk more about, and maybe that's something we can jump sure. on a call with the. MetaMask folks one day. Um, Jesse, but... I was tempted to break in when you were talking about security <laughs> reviews because, of course, some of those security reviews were both with the MetaMask team and about hardened JavaScript mm. so that other folks like, you know, MetaMask and, and Cosm.js and, and so forth could rely on it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, Santi. Um, uh, the, the other thing that... Uh, there's I say something about the wallet stuff. Oh, yes. The, the other thing that is worth noting, going back to the Atom 2.0 thing before we before we you know, head into the, the, the next round of events is, um, you know, at the allocator stuff in Atom 2.0, uh, Roland mentioned. But as an example there, you know, it's about it's about um, uh, token pairs and several of the examples there are about IST and IST Atom, for example. So so the awareness of, of IST and the stuff that we're building and launching in the not too distant future out in the Cosmoverse, you know, it's really sort of all working together in, you know, in, in this community. So, so just wanted to highlight that before I uh, uh, hand, finish handing it over to you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I, I think we covered, I, is there anything else on that, that uh, I don't know if Jesse or, or Roland wanted to bring up? I know we have a few minutes, but. No, I just generally, I think um, our community is just going to keep growing and growing and growing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> folks, get you know more involved and to continue to see things like support for our token happen without our involvement it means that um, yes. no it means we're hitting some critical mass and it's just thrilling to watch a permissionless ecosystem start to organize itself mm -hmm. yeah yeah no absolutely and I, you know i think um 
I have to make a nod. I know there's a uh, uh, this coming Tuesday. There's there's a Cosmos meetup that Agoric is is kind of co co organizing in, in at the uh, Settler Space in New York. Um, you know, you can reach out to us if you're if you're in the NYC area um, this coming Tuesday. <laughs> We'd love to see you there. Um, and you know, we're we're making some plans for Web Summit. You know, we won't say what yet, but um, we we are planning to attend that. And for those who don't know, Web Summit's probably probably one of the largest. I think web web events in uh or i should say web two focused events in uh uh in the industry in the world really and um, they have a huge focus on web three which is for our story is pretty interesting um given you know our drive to bring a lot of these web two developers into the web three space so um I think more details coming, right, right. Dean? That's probably a safe way to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but fundamentally, yes, yeah, yeah. Web two is, is is one of the biggest. Sorry, Web Summit is one of the biggest Web two events, and yeah. you know we're now we're now starting to get in a position to start. You know, Agoric is unique in its in 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 its ability to bridge to the Web two community uh, and 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 uh, make a bridge that they can come over into Web three, and so so you know that's a that that. That will be hugely important to the crypto ecosystem. Obviously, hugely important to the Agoric ecosystem, but it also takes time. And so we need we 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 start that ball rolling, um, uh, it, you know, with with this Web two summit event. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Any any other comments from anyone else on the uh, the team? I uh, I think we we got through a lot this call. Thank you all for. For the commitment. I just say that um, you know the the number of IST use cases you know was wonderful and uh, very helpful to have these discussions. If there's any others that uh, want to continue the conversation or that I haven't had a chance to speak with, just feel free to reach out. Um, I'm available on Twitter and also other channels via Agoric. Perfect. Good point. Not, you know, get, get that, con you know, <laughs> if you, if they went into the, uh, the, the next inter conversation, they should talk to you real soon now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Cool. Cool. All right. Um, well, thank you all. Thank you, Dean, Roland, Jesse, Vanessa, as always. Pleasure, and thanks to the community for joining. 